I'm Charlotte McBride. You're watching another great episode of PA Harness Week. I'm back here in Harris, Philadelphia this week, getting up close and personal with the starting gate, just like the horses do. And this week, I'm also getting up close and personal with driver trainer Vic Kirby. I'll introduce you to him. And we've got a great show on hand. Take a look at what you can expect to see in this next half hour. What a derby day at Pocono. We've got the beautiful pictures. We'll also showcase the Van Rose Memorial and take you to Miami Valley Raceway and Freehold for the Dexter Cup. We're off and racing right here at Harris, Philadelphia, and racing's fastest paced half hour. It all starts right now on Comcast Sportsnet. They're off. guys and dolls and welcome to another exciting episode, a thrill-packed episode of PA Harness Week, the show that puts the go and the no into harness racing action all the time. Hi, I'm Steve Ross, and this lovely creature to my left, as usual, is Heather Vitale. Hi, Heather. Hi, Steven. You don't have your funny hat on, your little foil thing hat this week. I don't, I don't, but I was at Pocono Downs when all of the incredible, beautiful women were in the Kentucky Derby hat review. You mean when Last all week. hat broke loose? <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. 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 Uh -huh. I had a little fascinator on myself. It was a huge day at Mohegan Sun of Pocono Downs on Derby Day. Why do they call them fascinators? Because they're fascinating. So that's just an abbreviation of fascinating? <laughs> I guess so. Okay. Uh, I will Google that when I get home. You will, uh, huh? There was a double header on Derby Day. So much fun. It's such a, a lively, amazing crowd. And I got to meet up with a lot of people. Amanda, how thrilled are you to win this amazing contest? I am so excited. I've been the runner up for like four years in a row. So it's nice to finally win. And a huge prize, something exciting is coming up soon in your life? Yes, my soon-to-be wedding in three months, so that will definitely help. <laughs> Tell me about your hat. Did you make it? Did you buy it? It's completely handmade, homemade. It's wire and hand-sewn fabric. It's a giant sunflower. <laughs> it took a little while to make. We are so glad that you came out and tried this one more time and you got the grand prize. Congratulations, Amanda. <laughs> Thank you. I'm very excited. Thank you. Lindsay, tell me about the great experience you're having today. I'm having an awesome time. This is the first time I was ever here. I came with all my friends and it's a good time. It really is. Have you ever been to the track before? No, I've never been here, ever. So this is my first time. I wish I wore a hat, but... Next year, I'll know to bring a hat. Sherry and Nitro are with me. Nitro, is this like Saturday night, date night? No, it was just a regular night out. What made you decide to bring Sherry out here then? Beautiful horses, good time, good people. Jen, it was a fantastic day, and there were so many people here. They have been here since early morning. I'm so excited because they came for the live early card and they stayed all day and partied and they enjoyed the festivities outside and the women with the hats and we had over 130 women in the contest it's just been a spectacular derby day and everybody is just talking about it which is great yeah there was a double header of live harness racing and of course the derby and a lot of money was bet on the derby right we actually reached a record numbers in our handle today of money bet on the Derby on track at Pocono, nearly $400,000. So we are really excited about that. Very, very excited. That's exciting, but we have to mention the hats because it's sort of all about the hats on Derby Day. How was the hat contest? It was really successful, and what I was really noticing about the hats was instead of the usual black and white and red hats, we saw a lot of orange and yellow and blue and all these vibrant colors, and some of the ideas were out of this world, which was really cool to see. And I want to thank Jen for letting me borrow this fascinator. I've gotten so many compliments on it today. You have been doing kind of an Oscars thing today, right? Changing up your hats all day? Yes, I couldn't decide on one, so I decided on three. And I've been interchanging throughout the day. The only thing I didn't do was change outfits, and I think maybe next year I'll do that. 
Jen, you are the best. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. I had a blast, and I'm so glad you came up for it. Thank you so much. Boy, Pocono can put on a show, can't they? I am talking. Boy, he can set up Pocono Downs, man. All those hats and people having fun. What's up with all that? <laughs> having I know. fun? I mean, what's How the deal? dare they? How dare they? It's always a fun time. Great hat thing. And you know what? It wasn't just the women all look great with those big brim hats. The men... Not as much, if you watched the show last week, of course. Oh, I thought your hat was fascinating. <laughs> it did fall apart a little bit, didn't it? All right, you know, it was also Derby Day on Saturday, and we got to get props out where they deserve to be given out. Everybody here on the show made a pick. So a lot of people out there saying, what do they know with their TV picks? The fact was, everybody knew that California Chrome was going to be the chalk, and our Bruce Casella from behind the camera, he, his pick was Commanding Curve. Commanding Curve went off at nearly 40 to 1, finished second, and I had the exacted because I boxed all the horses that we picked on the show. I nailed that bad boy $300 and change, and Bruce put all kinds of money on Commanding Curve. So we're happy here at PA Hardest Week this week, aren't we? Hail to Bruce. Hail yes. to Bruce. And speaking of Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, let's go out there because race 10, Heather was there in person, and she got to see the Van Rose Memorial. You want to talk about serious horse flesh? Golden Receiver, War of Way Needy, all that kind of horse flesh was in there. Talk about yes, it, Yes, it was. This is an invitational for extremely talented pacers. The first is $50,000. Van Rose, by the way, was this sports writer who just loved harness racing, and he was a local sports writer writing about what was happening at Pocono. Now, number three is uh, Davuto Hanover getting the most play. He's been first or second in his last six starts, and in with really talented horses. Number two is Dancing Yankee. He's been at the Levy at Yonkers, and um, really has been making waves up there. Number one, Golden Receiver, the richest horse in the race, and he is always a fan favorite. And from the pocket, Golden Receiver, the Meadowlands shipper, and a Claim Pacer steps to the front now for George Knapp. Abelard handover back in second. And here comes a charge from Dance and Yankee, last seen in the Levy. Dynamic Youth follows that up. Dovudo handover. The 9 to 5 favorite is third over. Bandolito also getting into the outer flow. Sweet Lou going to sneak up the inside with War We Needy at the back. The half 54 even. 28 and 3 second panel. Normalized just a little bit there. As now Dance and Yankee takes over from Golden Receiver and steps away here by two on the outside. Outside, Dynamic Youth trying to get close first over. He's still three away. Inside, Abelard Hanover needs a big breather here. Dovudo Hanover now steps out three wide for Pierce. And Bandolito follows that cover. But it's still a two-length advantage for Danson Yankee at three quarters and 120 and two. He went 26 and two with a win there. And Danson Yankee pulls out now to a three and a half length lead. Golden Receiver is fading far outside. Both Dovudo Hanover and Bandolito trying to close. Top of the stretch. It's all Dancing Yankee and Brett Miller. Dancing Yankee tucked in third while Golden Receiver and Abelard Hanover really duped it out. But then by the time they're going past the grandstand, Dancing Yankee is out first over and just a brush into the front, and he gets there. And then he just keeps going and going further away from the field, right? He ends up winning. He was tremendous on this night, 149. And this was actually an off track because it was raining. I got to catch up with a winning driver, Brett Miller, to find out more. Brett, I don't see where you've driven the horse before. Do you have a history with this horse that I don't know about? No, no, not at all. But I do have a history with Josh Green. Uh, we, we practically grew up together as kids. And uh, not that I've driven very many horses for him, but I'm, I'm glad I got to drive this one. Yeah, you mentioned trainer Josh Green. Now, did he call you and say, hey, look, this is how you should race the horse? Did you guys have like a pre-planned thing here? You know what? I, I, don't, I don't think I've talked to Josh in about a year. <laughs> so, no, no, we, we didn't talk a word about the race. And the, 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 when they sent the horse out, they handed me the lines and said, good luck. I see that he's gone in 50 on a sloppy track. It started raining here. As you can see, you know, actually, Brett does have cleaner colors that he usually wears. So there was a downpour soon before the race. Did you notice that he seemed to be good on a sloppy track as well? I mean, only, you know, this is the only time I drove him, so I really, you know, I, I really don't know how he is on different surfaces. I just know he was very good tonight. Thank you, Brad, so much. And I got to share something with you and the folks out there. You know, I like my name Steve is a good name. I like it. But if I had to pick my name, I would pick Brett. I've always loved that name. Maybe it's back to my old Brett Maverick days. I don't know, but I like the name Brett. 
Are you happy I, I, now? You know what? Me what? too. I'm going to take Brett. You going to take it? Yeah, Brett. Actually, me Brett too. can work for male or female, the whole nine yards, okay? <laughs> Stick around when we come back. We're going to have more action from Mohegan Center Pocono Down, so don't you dare go anyplace. Steelhead Hanover in from Yonker is able to take over there for Joe Pavia Jr. This message is brought to you by the more than 23,000 folks all across the Commonwealth, your friends, your neighbors, who proudly earn their living in Pennsylvania's horse racing and breeding industries. Each year, horse racing provides well over $4 billion in economic impact statewide, and horse racing is directly responsible for jobs, tens of thousands of solid, good-paying jobs in Erie, Harrisburg, Philadelphia, everywhere you look. Horse racing in Pennsylvania, it's a winner. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. You say you want some action, eh? How about this? Saturday's fifth at Mohegan Sun at Pocono Downs, a condition pace. Non winners at 22000 bucks in their last five starts. High class horse flesh, folks. 18 dimes on the line. Number four, Steelhead Hanover with Joe Pavia Jr. was two to one. Number seven, East and Eddie, five to two with Mac DeCaley. Number six, Automatic Slim. Sounds like a smoke to me with Brett Miller at three to one. And with a call, I can feel you, Jim Bavilia. Steelhead Hanover rated it well there, although the wind was in their face, so that attributed a little bit to that as well. Camby Zipper still there in the pocket, and then it's Automatic Slim saving ground. East and Eddie never found the cover he saw it, and so he's got to do it first over by himself about three lengths back. Behind him, big time promise, then Woodstock Hanover inside. Side six of the back, Arde Canover and the trailer. So take that. But the story is Steelhead Hanover, who gets to three quarters and 123 even. 27 to one third panel. Steelhead Hanover has extended his lead to about three and a half lengths. East and Eddie all out trying to reel him in. Then Camby Zipper and Automatic Slims. Top of the stretch, Joe Pavia Jr. looking good with Steelhead Hanover about three and a half lengths in front. Steelhead Hanover. I know it sounds like a stupid name for a horse. Steelhead. Hey, Steelhead. Hey, yo. <laughs> Wired won it by two and 115-2. East End Eddie was second. Automatic Slims finished fourth, but placed third when number eight Cam B Zipper off a of 22 to one with Ron Pierce was DQ'd. And now more action you want, more action you get. And the lovely Heather has race eight on Saturday's car. Thank you. And all winners at 25,000 last five. The first is $21,000. Number three is a stitch in time. Even money favorite super in the white series here at Pocono. Number two is Annie's Western card. Um, was in the preferred last time out, so this is a dropping class for him. And then number seven is Alexis Jackpot. Third choice in here, coming here from the Meadowlands. It's Annie's Western card. Oh, by two now over a stitch in time. Inside third there is Twilight Bonfire. And now first over Summer Camp with Ron Pierce starting to get into it, but still four and a half away. Picking up that cover, Archon. Top gear is saving ground. Big gap back to Better's Glass going by Alexis Jackpot. Three quarters, 121 and 127 and one third panel. Rain or no rain. Annie's Western card is just flying up front. A stitch in time is still a threat on the inside. Then it's Twilight Bonfire, Summer Camp, and Archon. Top of the stretch, Annie's Western card still there by a length. Here comes a stitch in time, making one more move. He didn't widen out a little bit there and lost his momentum, but it's, this one was in Annie's Western card's hands anyway. Annie's Western card was like, okay, see you, bye. As soon as the <laughs> gate unfolded, right? But you right? said she dropped like, down. Yeah, he dropped yeah. down. <laughs> Wait, I said the gate unfolded? The it, gate folded. I'm totally down. Valley Girl today, right? <laughs> All right, Maca Kaylee is in the bike and sets off the teletimers to win in 150 and two. Trained by Ron Burke. Uh -huh. Better is Glass was second. Third was Archon. Race 11. On uh, Pocono's card Saturday night. Uh, condition based nominee is a $22,500 in the last five starts and 18 dimes on the line. Number nine, Michael's Power was a late six scratch. We wish him well. Number one, Party Co. with George Knapp, even money. Number five, Word Power went off a nine to five with Jim Morrill Jr. Number six, School Kids with Brett Miller was four to one. And here's the call. School Kids kicks away to lead by two, two and a half maybe. Inside CP Panic, outside Word Power with an aggressive brush here for Jim Morrill Jr. Gets to within two. Clint Westwood is fourth. It is not happening for Party Cove on the outside. Further back to a bet on the law. Up top here, it's school kids with the lead. Morrill maneuvered word power in behind him. Three quarters, 123, then 27, even third panel. School kids now dealing with word power. Just a link.
length back. Inside third there is CP Panic and a late wide move coming from Scott Rocks. Top of the stretch, school kids now facing off with Word Power and the Yonker shipper Word Power and Jim Morrow Jr. blows right by as school kids goes off stride and Word Power gonna pace away and hide. Well, school kids cut the mile and looked like gold until the lane when he broke. Unfortunately, Word Power picked up the pieces, winning by three and 151 and three. Number four, CP Panic. I love that name. Off at 11 1 with Simon Lard got second. Number two, Clint Westwood, a 14 to 1 shot with Matt Kaylee got third. And Charla, our girl Charla, caught up with driver Victor Kirby, a third generation horseman, to find out what's going on in his world. All right, thanks, guys. We're going to get to know Vic Kirby a little bit, a driver and trainer. And I know you went to college. A lot of these guys didn't necessarily go and get a college education. Where did you go to college and why did you decide to go to college? I went to Marymount University. It's a small school in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, the main reason I went, uh, I got recruited there and I played basketball there. And also, I was involved in horse racing at a, young, at a young age, like a lot of people. I grew up at Brandywine Raceway, which is not far from here. And of course, like anybody that grew up in it, my plans after high school was to get right into it. And with basketball being one option and my mother uh, being another option, kind of <laughs> telling me, no, you're going to school. These horses will always be here. Uh, and I'm glad she did. It was, it was probably the greatest four years of my life. Um, and made a lot of friends, had a lot of fun. And I still have something to fall back on with a degree in communications if this doesn't work out, which right now it is, but there's uh, there's always tomorrow. You're happy driving, and I know you like training too. Do you have a favorite? Is there something that you just really love to do? No, I mean, uh, I, I train at my grandparents' farm, so I like to stay active with that. I don't keep a lot. Anywhere from two to six horses is usually what I keep as far as training. And also, uh, you know, it's busy running up and down the road racing here, and I race primarily in Delaware. So it's just something to stay busy, uh, and you know, having having the farm there, it it, it keeps me active with that, and and I, st I do enjoy training, just enjoy horses all overall. You've been doing this for a while. How many more years are left in you? How many more years are we going to see you out here? Well, I'm 41. I mean, you see guys like Cat Manzi, Tony Morgan, uh, you know, that Mike Lachance. They keep going. Uh, the the biggest key is just to stay healthy. You know, keep your love for the game, which which I still have a strong passion for, and enjoy what you're doing. If you don't enjoy what you're doing, there's there's no sense doing it, and you're not going to be good at it. Well said. Well, thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks, thanks for having me. Back to you guys. Thank you, Charla, and continued success to you, Victor Kirby. When we come back, we're going to go to Harris, Philadelphia, and they had a humongous, monstrous, giant payoff. Don't go away. It's Pappy's pal now getting swarmed. Outside long shot lightning moon takes the lead. When it's your time to shine, what will you do? At Mohegan Sun, wherever tonight takes you, it's your time to shine. Welcome back to PA Harness Week, Kim Asabi, along with Heather Vitale. I'm Steve Ross. I like Sharon Air with this woman. <laughs> yes, indeed. What a team player. It's a one-week rush. You know, it's a great buzz once a week <laughs> seeing this woman. Okay. All right, we got a more racing action. Race number nine on Saturday was a goodie, and the lovely Heather's got it for you. Thank goodness, I'm, I'm blushing. <laughs> right? Okay, now $20,100 last five. Now the purse is $20,000. One of our feature races for the fairs here in Philly. Number one, Lori, please. She's the favorite. She's coming here from the Meadowlands. So she's trying the 5 8 mile out. Number four, Classy Lane Rose. Huge long shot last time out. Easier company for her. And number five is Real Electra. Huge season last year, and she's still looking for her first win, though, in 2014. Up the bank stretch they go. Lori plays up by a half. Ooh, bad sharks getting the brunt of it. It's been parked since the word go. Glassy Lane Rose tight in the pocket third. On the outside, Pan Luisa Bispo well positioned in fourth. Smoke Pan Mirrors trapped in there with no place to go. Michaela Rose on the outside of a trapped Regal Electra. And a way back envious Hanover. On the inside, Lori plays three wide. Here 
comes Pan Luis Obispo. Still battling in between a zoo bad shark. Classy Lane Rose is off the cones now. Three quarters, 123 and three. They are still three across the track outside Pan Luis Obispo in between Ubad bad shark. Now coming out wide. Here comes Classy Lane Rose from far back. Regal Electra there bunching. They straighten on in. Far outside. Here comes the fresh legs of Classy Lane Rose to take over. Pan Luis Obispo far outside. Regal Electra through in between Smoke Pan Mears coming down to the finish. Classy Lane Rose. Classy Lane Rose and Lori Please, they whiz by the first quarter in 26 and 3. Now, Classy Lane Rose takes the seat, but then Lori Please is just pressured the entire mile by Oh Bad Shark, who's like first up the whole time, right? In deep stretch, Classy Lane Rose, she finds light, she gets up to win, 152 and 4. In the driver's seat, Tony Morgan, Ooh. only one of the winningest drivers in harness racing history with over 14,700 victories. Wow. Yes. Did you say whizzed by? Because it's, <laughs> see, CP Panic is generally the one who whizzes by. <laughs> but if you do it, maybe <laughs> others do. I don't know. Okay. Not All going right. there today. Not going there. Okay. <laughs> How about this race nine at Harris Sunday? You ready for this one? Number seven, Pappy's Pal with Yannick Jingroff for Ron Burt was one to five and cut the mile before hitting a wall on a 29 closing quarter, no less, and finished fourth. Longest shot on the board, number six, Lightning Moon, off at 60 to one with Anthony Morgan. Just edged at another bomber, number eight, Rockaholic. A 40 to 1 shot with Georgie Nass to win in 152 and 1. Number 4, a sweet ride off at 9 to 2 with Victor Kirby. Got third. The 6 8 exacta, 2,158.60. The 6 8 4 trifecta return, $17,025.60. Who said you can't make money in this game, Heather? Oh, not me. And Anthony Morgan. And Anthony Morgan. Oh, he's, there you go. he's a winner. Heather's right. got the next one for you. I do. Not a winner. 17500 last five. The first is $20,000. Number five is Tarpon Hanover. Better choice with Pat Berry in the bike. Number three, Big Town Hero. He He's won three in a row going into this event. And number one is a Cambassador. Couple starts back. Massive effort from this horse. Big Town Hero still has the lean. Cambassador right there in second. Second drum fire is no place to go. Transcending's not gaining. Three quarters, 123. 27 and two for three quarters. They come to the top of the stretch. Big Town Hero looking to do it again. Ambassador is second. Here comes drum fire now, popping out of third as they straighten away. Ken Cam alertly saves ground fourth. Big Town Hero has the lead up on the outside. Drum fire. Ambassador trying to get up the open. Deep stretch. Big Town Hero's almost home. Ambassador desperately lunging down to the finish. Big Town Hero. Big Town Hero threw on his cape and just with a single bound went to the front, ends up cutting out the fractions in 151 flat. Eric Goodell is in the driver's seat. Holy cow, Perhaps. Batman! <laughs> You're close. Different superhero, but still a hero. Sure, yeah. still, still a hero. Okay. Uh, Cambassador, he really had a good trip. He took home second. Drunk Fire A was third. Okay, when we come back, you won't want to go anyplace. We're going to go to Free Hall for this traditional great race. It is the Dexter Cup on the road to the Hamiltonian for three year old trotting Colts and Gelding. And also, we're going to go to Miami because, by it's always a good time to go to Miami. You can lay on the beach with a little suntan on your feet. What? Oh, I'm, I'm told it's not that Miami. It's in Ohio. Stick around. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, changing lives since 1976 by providing unforgettable experiences while educating young racing fans. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, hands-on equine learning at camps across the country and driving exhibitions. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, providing scholarships, leadership programs, career and college information. Support the Harness Horse Youth Foundation. Log on to hhyf.org and find us on Facebook. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, growing our future with enthusiasm. Hello there, Harness Racing fans, and welcome back to PA Harness Week. She's Heather Vitale. Me, I'm Steve Ross. You I'm, know I'm Brett Vitale, remember? And you're Brett Ross. Brett Vitale and Brett Ross get down dirty like a dog in the street. Yes, indeed. Okay. Let's go to Miami Valley. I kidded before about the Miami, the Miami reference. This Miami Valley is in Ohio. It was their closing day, and boy, what a way to bring down the curtain. 
How about this one? Race eight, the $50,000 Chip Noble III Memorial for mayors, four-year-olds and up. Check this out. Number two, you're going to kiss me or not with Dan Dubay was four to five. Number four, she be stinging. Only the fastest racehorse of the female persuasion in life in the history of harness racing, like ever. Yeah, only. Okay. Doesn't even she don't go off the favorite. She goes a three to two with Dave Miller. The rest, all double digit bombers. Here's the call. Into the turn, going to the three quarter mark. You gonna kiss me or not? The leader. She be stinging on the outside second. Three quarters, one, twenty three and two, twenty seven and four. Third panel, a little more than an eight to go. She be stinging on the outside. You gonna kiss me or not? On the inside, down the stretch they come. She be stinging on the outside. Just like the betters predicted, it was a two mare race with you gonna kiss me holding the inside. And she be stinging, grinded on the outside. Eventually, she be stinging showed her class and won at a length in 150 and four and paid five dollars. Hello, number seven, Jersey List. She saw at 15 to one with Corey Callahan was four back in third. And now the very next race at Miami Valley, the Distaff Grand Circuit Stake for Trotters four-year-olds and up, and there was a big name horse mare rather in the race, right, Heather? <laughs> that is correct. Number five is Maven. Now she's the one to five favorite, and this is her first official start of the year and she's still an overwhelming favorite. That is because last year she was voted the best trotting mare in all the United States and all of Canada. So there's you good don't reason. Say. I do say, oh. I do say. Now number three is Cowgirl Hall. She's second choice. She's had four wins out of six starts and against tough company. The rest double digits. Field of Trotters, three quarters and 126. Backside, 29 and one. A little more than an eight to go. Maven starts to open up by a length and a half. Mosher Hall on the outside. Down the stretch they trot. With every stride, Maven drawing away. Rockin' with Dewey led the field by the first quarter and 27 seconds, but then I driver... think Maven would probably win the race, right? <laughs> Wow, and you raised your hand to ask that. I'm well, impressed. I'm respectful. <laughs> okay, um, so yes, Maven does win in 153.3 for trainer Jonas Zernison. The driver, Yannick Jingra, he is so excited about this season with this mayor for a lot of really good reasons. Now it's time to go to Freehold. We're going to get see the Dexter Cup. This was a good one. There was a buck and a half on the line. It's the final, number one, Sumatra, not to be confused with. Boy, as Brian Sears with one five number eight sarcastic man of course i can identify with the name okay it was a five to one with ronnie pierce and number four king city with the minister speed it was seven to one it's a jump ball up the back stretch it's sumatra cradling a precious lead king city showing the effect of the overland trip sarcastic man press pierce is pressing every button so far isn't getting what he wants and is going to be hung the whole turn on the inside derby is good to go so is donato's wish three quarters and 128 flat it is Sumatra still coming up with all the right answers dead aim on the outside here comes Derby on Derby Day to try to win the Dexter it's Sumatra got things under full control Sumatra jogged by two and 157 and four on the road to the Hamiltonian number two Derby maybe a hunch bet on Derby Day off at 27 to one with Jordan Stratton the second number three Donato's Wish a 40 to one bomber with Ray Schnitger got third and Heather we got to mention a couple of milestones that were achieved during the past week. First, Dave Miller got 11,000. He's got 11,000 wins. That's a lot of scores. Yeah, he's one of my favorite drivers. He's a so. great guy. Oh, and only 9,000 short of the number of women supposedly Will Chamberlain said he had. <laughs> Which is 20,000. Wow, how did you, basketball and harness racing, just, that, wow. <laughs> and Stacy Kyoto, how about her on her favorite boo, Mighty Young Joe, with the fastest mile of a female driver in harness racing history, 149-3 in the 11th race at the Meadowlands on Saturday night. And that's going to do it for this edition of PA Harness Week. And for all of us here, lucky Bruce Casella, Charlotte McBride, the lovely... What is your name again? Heather Vitale. I'm Steve Ross reminding you to pick up the pace just a taste. Get yourself high on harness. It's only natural.